All righty then. What is up, world? It is Monday night, which means it's time for another Monday night online open mic, a.k.a. the stay-at-home open mic presented by BWAMS. We are coming to you from El Paso, Texas. My name is Richie. I'm the project director of the Barbed Open Mic Series, and this is one of our many programs that you can find regularly here online on YouTube, um, in addition to other shows that we do. And uh, it's awesome to be here. Um, we have another list of performers from all over the world, thanks to the beauty of the internet. Uh, so just a quick housekeep- housekeeping thing before we kick things off. Um, thankfully, I get to, to hand the reins over tonight. I'm super thankful for that. So before I do so, just want to give some shout outs. Uh, we've started the semester, so we do expect students to be tuning in. Um, if you are here for any of that stuff, just leave a comment on our live chat and I'll get back to you on that. Uh, but other than that, uh, we do encourage you to check out our live shows as well. We do have three events you can hit up this week that are poetry or BWAMs related. Um, obviously, if you want to sign up, I'm going to add a link so you can sign up. There's still plenty of room to sign up. And so as the show goes on and you feel like you want to share anything, this is the place to do so. If you're a little camera shy um, and maybe don't want to be part of the live stream, uh, we do encourage people to share anything that they wanted to share in the after party. And essentially what that is, is after we go live, some of us just hang out in the Zoom room. Um, it's still a thing. You know, we chat it up, talk about anything. It gets heated. Sometimes it's mellow. Sometimes we're just eating. Sometimes we're just chatting up about the most random of things. But if you want to share any work and you maybe just don't want to be part of the live stream, um, that is an option. I just want to mention that. Um, but of course, we're here every Monday. So if you're still trying to like scope it out, feel it out, then we'd love to have you next Monday. Now, we do have in-person events as well as part of the Barbed Wire Open Mic Series. If you haven't already, I encourage you to follow our social media. You can just type in Barbed Wire Open Mic anywhere, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Twitter, if you still use it. Uh, and uh, you can find our stuff. In fact, this week, we are debuting tomorrow, Tuesday, January 24th. We are debuting our first poetry-specific open mic. It's been a long time coming. And uh, hold on, I'm going to do some muting. <laughs> That's some action sounds right there. No, we're doing our first poetry-specific open mic, um, something that a lot of people needed because sometimes we're competing against loud bars and other, you know, people who are not there to hear your poetry, but this time they will be. So come on out. It's going to be at Capri, and we're going to try and make this a monthly thing. And from what I understand, there's a lot more poetry-specific events on the horizon, so I think that's great news for everyone. Um, you can follow on Facebook, Barbara Open Mic, and we'll, be, we'll keep you up to date with all that stuff. On Thursday, we have one of our regular mixed open mics at Old Cheap Dog Brewery, music, poetry, comedy, whatever you can think of in terms of the performance arts. Come on through. And then Saturday, I'll be going to Las Cruces to perform some poetry uh, with some other awesome poets and musicians. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, we'll be posting about that as well. Anyway, as promised, uh, I am going to hand over the reins. I'm going to step back, run the tech side of things, check in on the YouTube chat, share links appropriately. Um, but we're going to go ahead and pass things off to tonight's host, who you've seen here on every single show. We call him Mr. Monday Night, and he's ready to take over tonight's Monday Night. Let's go ahead and bring up to the stage Kit Ren. What is up, man? Good to have you here. Go and do your thing. Thank you, Richie. Thank you, everyone. Because the sun has made its way to its home in the western sky, and it is Monday night in El Paso. Uh, to get us started, I'm going to uh, continue the reading. I believe this is part four of, I don't know, of The Ghost Birds by Karen Russell. We began our descent down the low hill toward the pale brick ruins of Chapman Elementary. The front entrance appeared to have caved in a long time ago, the once white columns leaning like green dominoes, but I was reasonably confident that we could get in through the gymnasium. The building was constructed in the classical revival style, I told my daughter, America's loose interpretation of Europe's severe ideals. I pointed out the broken pediment over the entry door, the double hung rectangular windows through which we could see shining leads into second story classrooms. Geez, Starling said, who went to school here? Future senators? Burn-eating dinosaurs? 
Chapman Elementary had not been destroyed, and this had everything to do with humans' love of bow swifts. Birds were the reason the chimney still grazed the clouds, a factory-style smokestack with a Dickensian vibe, far better preserved than the ruins of downtown Portland. Thick silver cables made a triangle around the smokestack, the seismic stabilization system that had saved the school when Quake 7 flattened the city. Why do these ghosts like chimneys? Darling asked me, and I explained that the Swifts had been forced into the arrangement by humans who clear-cut the woods and encroached on their homes. When the birds were unable to locate old-growth snags, they adapted to a stone forest of millworks and smokestacks. Later, small bands of humans worked to protect the chimney corridor. Layering their feathery bodies over one another, the Swifts huddled together on cold nights, revived at daybreak by the sun-warmed bricks. You turn that boiler on and you're going to kill 15,000 Swifts, a biologist from Portland Audubon told the Chapman Elementary school children. So they voted to retire their furnace, piling on parkas and shivering at their desks until the last birds left. The children changed their plumage to save the Swifts. Starling yawned at me, theatrically unmoved by this fable. Before leaving on our trip, we had sat on Starling's bed and watched footage of the Swifts from the early 2000s. A gift from Portland Audubon, transferred to Hollow Reel by someone's great granddaughter. In the clip, thousands of Oregonians gathered on this hillside to tailgate the Gavo Swift's descent. Everyone gasped and applauded when the flock first appeared on the purple horizon line, materializing in twos and threes, then tens of hundreds around the slender brick tree of the chimney. We heard people shouting encouragement to the balletic, evasive Swifts, while others cheered on the hungry raptors that chased them, a whirlwind that was part Tom and Jerry, part sky horror. An hour before sunset, in the late September light, the tiny Swifts began to congregate, diffuse as autumn leaves and seemingly directionless. At some inscrutable signal, they sped into a dark blue cyclone and began to drop in an orderly frenzy into the open chimney. Even on the grainy hollow reel, it was clear that we were witnessing a miracle of coordination. The Vos Swiss turned from leaves to muscle, from fog to rope. A lasso formed in the sky made of 10,000 rotating bodies. By the time the moon had risen, the final slips had been inhaled into the chimney. How did they decide who goes in first, my daughter asked, and last? Those Swiss were mysterious aerialists of the Western woods. They had died out before researchers could answer that question. Perhaps she would be the one to make the discovery, I'd said, maybe a little too eagerly. Starling had rolled her eyes. I have enough homework, Dad. We reached the school with a golden hour to spare. Our silence changed color a dozen times. Arrival, elation, anticipation, nervousness, itchiness, impatience, dismay. The red sun that would have cued the living Swiss to descend made Nothing happened. The ghost failed to materialize. The evening blue was fringed with a deep maroon, and we stared at the trees inside the school windows. Nothing called to us from the surrounding foliage or the jungle of rust. Nothing came here to roost. Stars were beginning to appear in the sky, blessedly smokeless tonight. On such evenings, it's hard for me to stay suited up with my mouth glued to my respirator, even though my gauge assured me that toxins were hiding in this air. What if we missed it, Dad? What if they funneled in while we were standing here and never showed themselves to us? It was possible, of course. Backlit ghosts don't show up in my scope, and the sunset had seemed to follow me in my spectrograph to every new angle. Could 11,000 ghosts hide from us? What a silly question. How many billions are hiding from us now? You might be right, Starling. Do you want to have a look? And I think we'll leave it there for now. Part four of probably eight or nine by the time we finish of The Ghost Birds by Karen Russell. Uh, but we have a full roster of people who are not ghosts, who are living and breathing and close enough to human that we don't have any follow up questions in all cases. Uh, but for our first reader of the night, we are not going to go very far. Actually, you know, just a little heads up. We're just going down the hallway a little bit, just to my left. And that's where Robin Schofield is perched in front of her computer. 
full disclosure, she is my mom. Robin, when you're ready. Okay. Thank you. My computer is acting up a little bit, so I hope uh, I hope everybody. It says my connection is unstable, so I hope I can be heard. Uh, these are some poems about the river. The first one is called "Going Toward Nothing" by the revived Rio Grande, where it's the border with New Mexico, frothing through far west Texas. Since Elephant Butte Dam let go the snowy waters in late spring, I'm walking upstream on the sidewalk where it ends in the willows and a red-winged blackbird unseen before he trills disappears in river reeds, a star behind thin clouds still giving light. Then three ducks from the empty river passing through what promises to be again a thoroughfare of green as a thirsty coyote shows up and his raggedy coat shines in the harsh sand light like copper mined from three desert mountain ranges on the horizon. The organs to the north, Sierra del Cristo Rey to the south and Los Montañas de los Mansos to the east in two nations and three states abandoned mines and tongues of slag peppering the landscape, rivulets carved during the rainy months, all leading to the Rio Grande again, a mile a month before the monsoon, foamy and scum ridden, subject of lawsuits and treaties, the ever long debate over drought. And this one is uh, about a different river. But I saw this video of Sasquatch. So I was inspired to write about that. Sighting of Sasquatch, Upper Peninsula. He improvises a deer across the Cass River, a chamber ensemble featuring blood and fur, acoustic and electric, original composition, incendiary genre hopping creature, dual vision with no barrier between wild and tame, between old notions of existing and not existing. That's about all I have. Um, I'm the featured poet at panoplyzine.com this week. And I'm featured on a video that we took uh, from when I read it on the, the open mic. So uh, if you're in the mood, take a look at that. Uh, that's that's it. We did. That's it for right now. Well, thanks very much. Thanks for uh, kicking us off in the right direction. And yes, that's on Panoply Magazine. And we uh, actually cl clipped the reading of that poem, Lunch in the Library. Uh, from, I believe, the December 22nd edition of this mic. So it's a great way to, that's another thing about this mic is if you ever need proof that this is what you do, here it is. You know, I go back later in the week and I put in little timestamps so everyone can find themselves, have a nice little, can prove to their friends that they're famous if that's what they want to do. Uh, so we're going to uh, trade in our Rocky Mountains for the Allegheny's and uh, move up to Pittsburgh uh, because that's where our friend Vail Larkin uh, applies their trade. They have a lot of exciting news in the uh, in the news feed, uh, in the place where news goes, wherever that may be. Uh, and I can't wait for them to share it with us. Vail, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Feeling good, feeling great. Good. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm doing well. Uh, we've solidified that the play is going to be running April 21st through the 23rd. There will be four shows, two evening shows and two matinees and uh, an invite dress. So if you know anyone in the production and you live in New York City, ask and maybe you could get invited. Um, 
and uh and i just randomly got a note that i got three pieces into a journal i forgot i sent it to so that's always nice <laughs> okay i'm gonna read um i'm gonna read a few here today uh okay observations of oxygen in the beginning there was the word and the word was life this is what we tell each other whispering from our houses out into the desolation that lies between all of us observation is causation we say snickering about slits and particle guns like we can recreate creation by pointing at a target hard enough once upon a time i told myself there was a world. The world was life, and life was the world, every single solitary sliver of it. We lived as all live, in concert with our natures, shameless and unburdened. We've crossed oceans and tectonic phenomena in our quest for more and farther, so we reach ceaselessly, so we strive where we once stood, race where we once paced with our weakest and slowest, we unleash what we would have shunned. We are undone by ambition and self-delusion. We believe, therefore they are, we say of gods. We know, therefore they become, we say of children. We see, therefore it is, we say of this real moment right now. Reaching beyond nature, we found manipulation. Beyond mercy, we found murder. Beyond humanity, we found slavery. Beyond hope, we made commerce. And beyond life, we built an end to ourselves. Observation is causation, we think, picturing the end of our world. In 1774, after nearly 400,000 years of us, in a country not yet born when the world ended the first hundred times, Mesopotamian to Mayan, watching it all come crumpling down again, a teacher discovered the existence of a substance, a gas called oxygen. Clearly, knowledge makes all things possible. And this next piece is a brand new one, um, and I wrote it for a friend of mine. We're going through some similar experiences, and we've been connecting a lot through them. Waystation song for Normatics. His voice is an old voice, slow and dryly wise. He says he is meditating again and finding some peace in the places between. We talk about dying with wide eyes, nothing shuttered, no walls. We talk about life with the voices of old women comparing their wedding photos. We talk about art like a life raft, carrying us over the shoals of our bodies and their erratic betrayals. He remembers his wife's death, how she stepped quite abruptly from struggle to acceptance and how she was gone before anyone else had the chance to accept. He understands her better now. I'm still not certain how this happened. This friendship where we say honest and terrible things to each other because hearing them echoed in all their unwieldiness lessens the weight of their boots on our chests. Journeys make family of companions and companions of those once merely admired. I pray every time we sign off for our strength, for our will to be present, even when presence is fading and life is too sharp. I pray for him to find that center he is seeking. I pray I will. In the night, the voice of another traveler waiting for dawn and journeying on, we sing a hymn together for the warm embrace of darkness to hold on to us just a little longer. And one more. I thought I'd end on something light. This is a maybe a modified tanka, three haiku and two five line things. It's called housewarming, hashtag box of spiders. I have brought for you this small box of spider eggs to guard and delight your new home. I hope that the hatching is both soon and plentiful. If you're out of spiders, please do not hesitate to call on me and choose from adoptables filling my guest room.
Hey, that's uh we're all full of animals here, so I don't know if I can <laughs> that, but we do appreciate the opera veil. Uh thank you so much. Is there anything you'd like to plug in this time? Uh yeah, I'll do, I'll plug uh the artists fund for my play Words of the Prophets. This is not money that goes to me. This is money that goes to the actors and tech crew. Um, the link is there. Hopefully they'll put that in YouTube. Thank you. Okay. No need to hope because I'm pretty sure Vichy's on it. Uh, we're a, we're a well-oiled machine here at the Barb Wire Open Mic Series. Stay at home open mic. We're here every Monday uh, from 8.30 till when we finish. That's guaranteed. And, uh, Someone else who's uh, here very often, and his word is pretty close to a guarantee as well. Uh, he's our friend up a little bit north of us, still, but in the same mountain range up in those Rockies, up in Denver. And he is a lighthouse to everyone who needs one. If you, please welcome Michael Sindler. Oil can, oil can. <laughs> yeah, but if you need something to get you lubricating going in your writing i do suggest very strongly check out lighthousewriters.org lots of wonderful classes and workshops and events a lot of which are free even um i'm gonna do a few i'm gonna start with a new one and then just go to an old one that I haven't done in ages that I just felt like I'm thinking about the person it was written for. But uh, this first one, you get extra credit if you actually figure out uh, what it's based on. So far, no one has. Drawn back for FSF. Drawn back into the past like that damn boat, bailing water in ceaseless panic feet frozen in black pooling memory, broken ore floating away from crisis, bailing water in ceaseless panic, green light reflected on rippling lake, broken ore floating away from crisis, like cries of egrets echoing regrets, green light reflected on rippling lake, erasing all hints of stars and moon, like cries of egrets echoing regrets, clouds muffle the heavens, erasing all hints of stars or moon. Two shades of darkness melt into one, clouds muffle the heavens, all dipping into damp unknown. Two shades of darkness melt into one, Fortune and failure form forced equivalents, all dipping into damp unknown, drawn back into the past like that damn boat. Okay, and um, this next one is about a friend of mine who's an uh, artist and uh, actually tremendous artist um, and it's called the enabler of transformation for robert saunders he picks up lost items from the street gloves flattened by traffic left to weather small glimmering objects and cast off remains baubles and trinkets marbles and machinery strange things lost among the scenery nothing the average eye would recognize as treasures much like the magpie or the bower bird, he ferrets about collecting, then brings his finds back to his nest. At home, he arranges, stacking glove upon glove in patterns of color, thickness, and texture, forming pyramids or grids or circles of glass and metal, stone and bone, ribbons of rubber tread woven like baskets, all transformed into concrete poems. Were these materials meant to find this fate? Did mechanisms of magic bring them into his path to undergo alchemical rebirth? Did they wait their time knowing he would pluck them from asphalt, concrete, or bare earth? 
Did they sing across distances to each other, knowing somehow, sometime, somewhere, they would come together? Did they know that only this artist and collector could give meaning to their new connection? That only he could create new life, transubstantiated from the world's rejected, lost and unloved scraps, its underrated artifacts? Is it possible that they could guess that he alone could make the world a place a little more poetic, more infused with an aesthetic understanding by his handling and rearranging and renaming of the simplest elements with respect and love and the gift of balance? The question remains among the evidence. And do one more um tomorrow would be my mother's 93rd birthday uh but she passed away five years ago and this is a piece i wrote uh shortly before her last birthday it's called instance she remembers things for instance who i am where she is, she's forgotten things forever, people, dates, and places, the food she liked to eat, the show she liked to watch, none of them still matter, they all fade away in instance. She lies in her bed and wants to go home. She takes two bites of food and says she's done. She's still full of love, but can't remember who for. She's fading away. She's fading away. But there's still this instant. And that is my treasure. And with that, I will put on the hat. And thought I would go a little different. Uh, won't do any um, songs, do some more classical page poetry. I'm going to do two by William Carlos Williams and one by Mary Oliver. I'm just feeling pretty wintry. So this first William Carlos Williams poem is called January. Again, I reply to the triple winds running chromatic fifths of derision outside my window. Play louder. You will not succeed. I am bound more to my sentences the more you batter at me to follow you. And the wind, as before, fingers perfectly its derisive music. And the next one is called Blizzard. Snow. Years of anger following hours that float idly down. The blizzard drifts its weight deeper and deeper for three days or 60 years, eh? Then the sun, a cl clutter of yellow and blue flakes. Hairy looking trees stand out in long alleys over a wild solitude. The man turns, and there, the solitary track stretched out upon the world. And lastly, uh, this is by Mary Oliver, and it's called White Eyes. In winter, all the singing is in the tops of the trees, where the wind bird, with its white eyes, shoves and pushes among the branches, like any of us. He wants to go to sleep, but he's restless. He has an idea and slowly it unfolds. From under his beating wings, as long as he stays awake, but this big, but his big round music, after all, is too breathy to last. So it's over. In the pine crown, he makes his nest. He's done all he can. I don't know the name of this bird. I only imagine his glittering beak tucked in a white wing while the clouds, which he has summoned from the north, which he is taught to be mild and silent, thicken 
and begin to fall into the world below like stars or the feathers of some unimaginable bird that loves us, that is asleep now and silent, that has turned itself into snow. Okay, thank you all very much. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for reading Mary Oliver, a personal favorite. Uh, any any upcoming events you'd like to plug or? Okay. All right. Uh, yes, and Michael, of course, uh, chose to do the cover poem, which he calls the hat poem, because I don't know. I don't know. And so that's something we like to encourage around here, because mus musicians can do it too. Why can't poets? And uh, it's something that's catching on in the wider world. I'm excited to see it happen. I see in flyers for stuff around here. And I'm pretty excited about those too. Uh, but coming up next to this stage right here, this digital stage, uh, we're going to go up to Brunswick, Maine, where uh, a friend of ours, Brian Franco, applies his trade. And he did not leave me any fun stories in the uh, bio notes this week. So I will be over that in due time, I'm sure. But Brian, when you're ready. Uh, it's not a slide on you, kid. Don't worry. I was just not in the mood for, for I anything. Understand. To, I think sometimes you just can't think of anything good. Um, so I I'll start off with a new haiku. No cogito ergo no sum. I think, therefore, I, when I don't think, I forget how to, therefore, I. And I'm going to do two poems. Um, the first is why monopoly is an exercise in redemption. What I know for sure is not very much. I've been hungry, but have never known true hunger. I have hungered, but have never been truly hungry. I have felt my heart beat through my chest. I have felt my heart speak through my voice. I have said words that can be defined as heartless. Heartless is not a synonym for mean or rude, but a word unto itself that etches words into scar tissue as history unforgettable. When I have been heartless, I started on the defensive, then transformed in a flash into ostensibly offensive. Words became criminal without ever having been crimes. Excuses were excuseless. To try to erase what can't be erased is like playing, paying a debt with Monopoly money outside of playing Monopoly. All the little houses and hotels are just little pieces of plastic. All the real estate was once land where howling four-legged wolves roamed, where wolves preyed upon those they preyed upon. Now new wolves with two legs and thumbs prey upon new prey, who pray for redemption, who pray to never know lonely, who Pray to never be a wolf. What the wolves know for sure is if they can put cocoa butter on their lips, they can give cocoa butter kisses while biting the heads off their prey. The wolves said they cannot say they cannot avoid being who they were born to be. They believe they will they will never need to pray for redemption because they are predators. And then this is called, even though I was not born when FDR said, we have nothing to fear except fear itself. I believe he was channeling me. Una, I'm not sure whether I'm more afraid of living or dying. Dos, I am not sure whether I am more afraid of the past or the future. Tres, I'm not sure whether I'm more afraid of failure or success. Quatro, I'm not sure whether I'm more afraid of dreaming or not fulfilling my dreams. Cinco, I'm not sure whether I'm more afraid of waking up or the existence of the sun. Six, I'm not sure whether I'm more afraid of fresh air or breathing it. Siete, I'm not sure whether I'm more afraid of the mirror or denying its existence. Ocha, I am not sure whether I'm more afraid of being invisible 
or being seen. No way that I'm not sure whether I'm more afraid of being ignored or being anonymous. Yes, I'm not sure whether I'm more afraid of being anonymous or being afraid or simply just being. Thank you. And I will put into the chat on um, my next uh, um, Cafe Journalist Amo. And next Cafe Journalist I'm trying to get it up there so I can see it, but it's not. Is going to be on, I believe, the 6th. The 6th of uh, February, then on February 25th, I'll be doing Gestalt Open Mic. And then on March 25th, I have a Tumble Words workshop called Consequential Words. Thank you, everyone. And thank you very much, Kit. Thank you, Richie. Thank you, Robin, for giving us Kit. All right. Thank you for giving me the title for your workshop. That's I'll have to remember that. Consequential words. Okay. Going to type that into Word. The next available opportunity. Do not yet have that opportunity because we still have more people to go on our list right here. Uh, we're going to double back and head back to Pittsburgh and we're going to shift gears. We're going to go uh, from verse to prose. And but the imagery will still be just as mysterious. And uh and I'm really excited for this. Please welcome Andrew Pryor. Andrew, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm going to read a short story tonight. Um it's I don't think I've ever read this one before anywhere. So here it goes. There are no bells in the clock tower, but they chime all the same. The cold keeps me awake, and the bells sometimes go off ten times an hour, sometimes only twice a day, sometimes at five minutes before midnight, sometimes 17 minutes past every hour. The entire tower rumbles and quivers when the bells chime. I've spent hours looking for them, for any trace of clockwork. I'm, a, I'm up north, near the Arctic Circle. I live inside this tower, the spire on the top extending past the highest clouds, blue-black water and dismembered glacier bits gliding past the base. My presence is very important, yet no one knows that I'm here, except for the old man in the orange raft that delivers supplies every Sunday morning. He has wrinkles at the corner of his mouth and a small Bible in the front pocket of his fishing vest over his heart. Once I asked him why I was here, you're here because you wanted purpose in your life, he said to me. I know, I said, but what do I do now that I'm here? Stay sane, the old man said, not quite smiling, not quite frowning. That's all. Stay sane and listen. But there's nobody here to listen to. Just the wailing of the northern wind and the rumbling of the sea and the chimes that go off whenever they please. When I can't sleep, I take the stairs, down, down past the waves lapping the stone, down where I can't hear the chimes anymore, just the low pulse of the earth and the hollow noises of my footsteps, down, down, as far as I feel like walking before I turn back, a glass thermometer in between my lips like a cigarette. I've never reached the bottom. The thermometer was the only thing here when I arrived for the first time lying on the stone floor like a welcome gift. That's what you do when you're so tired you can't think, I guess. You take your temperature, and despite the inability to hear your own heartbeat above the clanging of the bells and the whistling of the wind and the low chasing murmur of the earth as you scramble up the stone stairs towards the cold, life of the cold light of the afternoon, the mercury rises and tells you that you're still 98.6, and you feel your hot breath in front of your face, even if you can't hear it. I'm finished. All right. Well, thanks very much. Uh, where can the people find you online if they want more of that? Uh, Facebook, and I'll, I'll think the podcast and show. All right. Okay. Well, thanks very much, Andrew, as always. And we're going to 
we're going to switch things up a bit. We're going to go on the way out to the West Coast. Our first uh, trip to the Pacific, we're going to the Bay Area where our friend uh, Finn Bell plies her train. And she has a whole litany of events that, that she can't wait to tell you about, but also, <laughs> and is a very, a very formidable poet herself, Finn, when you're ready. Thanks so much, Kit. Good evening, folks. Um, some, of, some of you I saw earlier this weekend, I mean, this uh, today. Uh, so uh, a while ago, I did a uh, collaboration with at the New Year with um, Lantern Carrier. Um, and we did two separate poems and uh, Lantern very skillfully blended them together. Um, so I'm just going to share my portion uh, which is, is like a whole poem as well. Um, Imperfect Perfections, part two. He called me perfect. I saw none of what he claimed was present as truth reflected back to me in his eyes. I thought myself clay to be shaped, refined, made into more. I did not see my hands needing of their own accord, creator tucked in the cosmos. In the beginning, the universe mute. He was the waves, the laughing ocean, blue beckoning, pulling. I was the sea nymph. I landlocked in my own insecurities. Pacific Ocean, a prison, not a waterway to love finally choosing me, not a route to make my way home. I'm holding the secret to the water herself, embodied in my cumbersome form. I believed I was a Calypso Tempest, Tempest dream girl, a Varga girl mutation. My mind played this on repeat, a loop that stupefied, but did not care to stick. My heart was sick. I was no one's seafoam fantasy, birthed fully formed, not even my own, especially not my own. What happens to the Nereid? in self-imposed exile from native tide pools, from truest form, from native tide pools, from blood flow, from native tide pools, from pulsing heart. The slow certainty in death is agonizing. In death is new life. Did you know of that miracle? Our mother, our Gaia, she stirs, pulls her ball root from the soil and shakes us out, slumbering corpse children. Awaken, she chides, lovingly, joyful. There's still much to do. I am the sea glass goddess, the ethereal snowflake impossibility after the snow storm. I am the moon, hallucinogenic, two ring fire. I am reborn, as ancient as grandmother galaxies, leaving cosmic dust for us to form worlds upon. I am imperfect. As astonishing as patterns formed from within matter, heavenly body progeny from a single asteroid, order and life emergent from chaos. Then Bell, 1255 PM, 22 January, 2023. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Finn. And uh, where can, if folks are tuning in for the first time, where, they, where can they find more of that and more of you? Um, you could find most of me on uh, Instagram, Finn underscore Bell. And uh, you can also find my events um, on Eventbrite under Fincapulary. Thank you. Right. They're always a good time when I have the time to show up. And uh, now uh, our, our normal host, Richie Marufo, since we have a pretty full slate of live things out and about in El Paso, um, he took, he was gracious enough to let me man this one. Uh, this is also some, and another way he benefits from that is also he gets to actually read instead of having to control this circus. <laughs> so we're all too happy to let him read right now. Richie, when you're ready. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kit. And the truth is, if I am I ever ready? 
I don't know. I've been doing this for so long. I still don't know. Um, I uh, it's, it's getting a little cold out. There's a winter warning here in El Paso, which for many of you, maybe it's not that cold, but uh, I'm feeling the cold. I'm feeling the the darkness, the loneliness, the despair. So I found some some poems here I wanted to cover um, that uh, maybe is someone going through it. Uh, first, I'm going to read from my friend Jose Olivares, uh, Citizen Illegal. We're bringing him into El Paso in April to do a reading. So I'll be announcing that closer when we have things finalized in terms of times, but uh, that is for sure happening in April. Um, This one's called, My Therapist Says Make Friends with Your Monsters. We are gathered in truth because my therapist said it was time to stop running. And I pay my therapist too much to be wrong, so I am here. My monsters look almost human. In the sterile office light, my monsters say they want to be friends. I remember when we first met, me and my monsters. I remember the moment I planted each one, each time I tread to shed a piece of myself. It grew into a monster. Take this one with the collar of belly fat, the monster called chubby, husky, gordito. I climbed out of that skin as fast as I could, only to see some spirit give it legs. I ran and it never stopped chasing me. Each new humiliation coming to life and following after me, after me, a long procession of sad monsters, each monster hungry to drag me back, to return me to the dirt I came from. Ashes to ashes, fat boy to fat, my monsters crowd around me. My therapist says I can't make I can't make the monsters disappear no matter how much I pay her. All she can do is bring them into the room so I can get to know them, so I can learn their names, so I can see clearly their toothless mouths, their empty hands, their pleading eyes. I'll be reading more from this in the next couple of weeks just to kind of prep for Jose's visit. He actually has a new collection coming out on uh, Valentine's Day. Promises of Gold is the new collection. It's a Valentine's Day drop. Uh, next up, I've got a, a chat book from uh, Lino Anunciacion. He came to BWAMS to El Paso a couple, a couple years ago. At this point, it was already quite, what, maybe five or six years ago, probably even longer than that. Um, and he just commanded the room with his presence, uh, and which I really appreciate. So this is a pretty great collection as well. It's called, And Then You Begin to Sing. <clears throat> and I'm going to read a couple pieces from here. The year the heroes die, when the flesh becomes too heavy, the bones will shed the excess. All the oceans turn into dust bowls. You remember the waves, but not the water. You can't recognize the face in the photos, but you feel like you miss whoever it is. How can you mourn what you haven't lost? I want to feel loved again isn't exactly true. You can't remember the day they left and some say that means you're over it. What a terrible lie. What a heavenly way to die, again, that is, to die again, to come back and decide it's not worth sticking around for, to leave home twice, and to be allowed back in. What a godly thing third chances are. You wouldn't know. Me neither. All right. And the last one of this. um, Content warning, self-harm, suicide, so. This one's called Rothko. There are 14 different shades of dark paintings in the Rothko Chapel. It is widely believed that blood, before it receives oxygen, is a dark blue or purple. This cannot be witnessed outside of the body once the blood reaches the atmosphere. It's a bit tricky to prove. We should know. Rothko tried 14 times. But it's not true. It's red. It's always red. Rothko, put your blood back in you. Take the paintings down. Take your hands off the razor. Go home, Mark. It's dark red outside. You looked at the red pill and then the blue. You took them. You took both to stop the trembling. 
you knew someone would find you. You left 14 paintings, too dark for anyone to understand. So you cut a single hole right in the middle of the ceiling to, lead us, to let us see inside the body. Uh, anyway, I would have had more, but I was kind of preparing to read at the end. Um, maybe I'll maybe close out the show with a couple of original pieces. I, uh, I did it different. I'm like, I'm going to read all cover poems. And if you stick around towards the end of the show, maybe I'll share a couple of uh, originals, a couple of OGs, because uh, I still need to look for them. Anyway, thank you, Kit. I think, uh, how are we looking on the list? <laughs> yeah, I'll, let, I'll go ahead and pass it back to you. Yeah, we, um, I've been a little bit too efficient in uh, how I dealt with things. And so we're um, already at the end, but we're still, we're still actually waiting on a couple of people. So I will, um, I'll go ahead with the next bit of, uh, <laughs> I'll go ahead and go back, dive back into the Karen Russell, read the next bit of it and see if that gives um, uh, beloved regulars, Eddie and Tessa Zomok, uh, time to follow the, follow the breadcrumbs in. I hadn't set foot in a school in three decades and the child in me shuddered. It took us a long time to reach the hollow shell of the gymnasium at the base of the hill. There was a stretch of exposed blacktop with faint yellow markings, which might've been an ancient basketball court. This was where we'd be apprehended, I thought, if there were indeed surveillers. Starling followed me, zipped into her white Tyvek suit with the dull red face shield that made her look like an astronaut on our own planet. Whatever she might be thinking about, it was not the fresh pencil-saving smell of September, bound books and bullies and locker codes. Starling started ninth grade last month. She exists for her teachers as a lollipop-headed projection in the make-believe agora of the virtual high school, a flickery, publicly funded arts magnet. Only the wealthiest kids can afford private in-home tutors. My daughter and her moody, multiply pierced friends recite Neruda's sonnets into their Edu helmet microphones. Snow days have been replaced by electrical storms at the server farms. Starling's login seems to fail every other week to her great relief. Did you like, did you like school? Starling asked me. I was scanning the windows, wondering what might cause the plants to sway on a windless indoor night. It was a subtle, unmistakable look. I can't say I did. I was more of an autodidact. I made my teachers nuts. My daughter smiled inside her mask. That doesn't surprise me. Sometimes I think I should have left Yesenia years earlier. Sometimes I know I should have fought harder to stay. No scenario seems fair to Starling. Even though the verdict is in and the papers are signed, I still run with the hypothesis that we could patch things up. I love being a full-time dad to Starling. Loved. Past tense. That can't be right. Starling claims not to mind splitting time. It sounds so violent. I picture her in safety goggles, bringing the axe down on a block of hours. She says she wants us all to be happy. Happiness for all three of us? None of my experiments has yielded any insight as to how that might be accomplished. The rubble was daunting. We had to crawl on our hands and knees around the broken columns. And it was my daughter who found the hole in the eastern wall that we half wormed, half sledded through to get inside. To the ground floor, rousing decades of dust, just when I decided that we ought to turn back, the ceiling abruptly soared away from our heads. Wow, it feels like someone took the lid off a box, Starling said. We stood and spun our headlamps through what must have been the school auditorium. I had the exciting, upsetting sensation that we were being swallowed by the school, transported from the building's throat into its belly via a kind of architectural peristalsis. Above us, the hallways crimped and straightened. I had always intended to call off our expedition at the first sign of danger. But in the putty gray lighting of our headlamps, nothing felt quite real, and it became harder and harder to imagine crawling backward in defeat when the slits might be glowing just around the next bend in the elementary school labyrinth. It took effort to imagine that generations of children's laughter once echoed here. 
or birds chirping for that matter. Do you want to keep going, Starling? I asked, and she grunted yes. Or possibly the school itself did. The pipes seemed to be running somehow. Or to be alive with a watery echo. The light was almost non-existent, and I helped Starling to switch her headlamp to night vision. Starling? I called into the spandrel under the school stairwell, where she'd been standing only a heartbeat earlier. Stay where I can see you. Starling decided not to listen. Even as a small girl, she had a maddening talent for tuning us out. She'd stare into the sky blue glow of her hollow light with the lidless focus of a fighter pilot and ignore a hundred repetitions of her name. Why can't you be a good listener? Her mother would warble. Once around age seven, she turned our voices back on us. When you say listen, what you really mean is obey. I hope you'll believe me. Even if Starling's mother one day tells this story, the story of this night, as if I were a criminal using a verb like kidnapped, a noun like danger, I never imagined our trip could torque like this. I'm gonna leave you on Tinder hooks on that one. And I have some great news for all of us because try and really hard to think of a couplet. But sometimes it just doesn't come to me and I might just end up saying, fuck it. But someone who never passes up a chance to rhyme <laughs> and who fills uh, every open mic he finds with his chime, that would be Eddie Foreman. <laughs> Eddie, are you here with us? Yes, yeah. please rhyme all the time because to be sublime. All the time. <laughs> oh, kids, you were always the um shit every time you spit. Ah, your words always hit. Ah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. My name is Ed Potastic. I feel fantastic. Please give me time to enjoy my rhymes of all you feel sublime. I got six jokes and three poems, so you know they're gonna rhyme. My first poem is, my first joke is, let's see. Here, here's one. Why couldn't the rabbit work? He was too hopping mad. <laughs> what kind of drink did the mammoth order? A fuzzy navel. Why didn't the clown graduate from clown college? He gave the dean his just desserts with a direct punchline. Why did the electric company hire fireflies? Who doesn't need an extra light? Why did the, why did the mole hate golf? Too many holes. Why did the parrot got fired from customer service? He kept repeating the same orders. And last but not least, what did the pirates said about their friend? Arg, he been hooked by his siren. Hope he doesn't get scurvy. <laughs> oh, I love it. I uh, love you guys. You always guys make you always you guys always blew blew my skies. <laughs> I love the the laughter in your eyes. All right. Um first this is um this is the MLK poem. This is called I Have a Dream. I have a dream we can love each other. I have a dream we can respect each other. I have a dream we can understand each other. I have a dream we can support each other. I have a dream we can educate each other. I have a dream we can cherish each other. I have a dream we can guide each other. I have a dream, excuse me, we can inspire each other. I have a dream we could hold each other. I have a dream we can empower each other. 
I have a dream we can shelter each other. I have a dream we can feed each other. I have a dream we can protect each other. I have a dream we can strengthen each other. I have a dream we can heal each other. I have a dream we can nurture each other. I have a dream we can reg radiate each other. I have a dream we can lift up each other. I have a dream we can celebrate each other. I have a dream we can prosper each other. I have a dream we can free each other. I have a dream we can live in harmony with each other. I have a dream. I have a dream. I have a dream. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm on fire because I love to I love to inspire your worldly desires. Uh do 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 do. The next one is called Long Night. The lights are fading away, the stars are dancing high, the shadows came out to play, the twinkle coming from our eyes. The quiet hugs our ears, the silence thicker than any knife. The shadows, I mean, the shades are near, another chime in the night light. The colorful, strang sorry, the colorful strangers yawn, yearning for slumber, rubbing their sandy doors, bodies slowly moving like lumber, minds quietly yearning for their beds to restore. The lightning migrations has begun. The concrete rows packed full of flashing lights and, and sounds. The beams were brighter than the sun. The ride of the mindless merry-go-round. The tiny bugs singing miniature notes. Fireflies flashing their radiant glow. The small yet whimsical thunderbolts flying high, nice, and slow. The blanket of chilling yet humid air. The smoky fog is everywhere. The sun is sleeping, I'm fully aware. The warming spiral has no warmth to spare or share. The vivid towers have signs of clothes. The darkness flooding them rooms and halls. The places to eat, I suppose, while the flames remain froze. Many different shadow silhouettes dancing on the walls. Walk with me, myself and I, is this ghostly mind behind me. I see you in the corners of my eye. You copycat who flows fluently as the sea. My night commute has reached an end. I jiggle my wand to open my iron gate. Time to clean and hug my soft, fluffy friends. Turning off my lights, let me dream for goodness sake. Thank you. And I got one more for a star for an encore forevermore. This is called The Fight Isn't Over. <clears throat> the fight isn't over. There's still air in your lungs. The fight isn't over. There's still blood in your veins. The fight isn't over. There's still steel in your bones. The fight isn't over. There's still light in the darkness. The fight isn't over. There's still days for your tomorrows. The fight isn't over. There's still life in the abyss. The fight isn't over. There's still time in your hourglass. The fight isn't over. There's still fire in your heart. The fight isn't over. There's still water in your eyes. The fight isn't over. There's still wind beneath your legs. The fight isn't over. There's still stone in your fist. The fight isn't over. There's still doors in your horizons. The fight isn't over. There's still gales in your mind. The fight isn't over. There's still a moon in your night. The fight isn't over. There's still dreams in your river. The fight isn't over. There's still a sun in your atmosphere. The fight isn't over. There's still clouds in your skies. The fight is never over. Thank you. <laughs> All right, the fight is never over. Okay. Uh, thanks very much for that, Eddie. And if the people want more of that, where can they find you? You can follow me at this wonderful old mic that made our wonderful night such a delight in the wonderful Potastic Spotlight. But if you want to follow me, feel free. My Facebook is Eddie Foreman and my IG is Eddie Foreman 92. And remember, if the mic is right, I'll be there to shine Potastic Insight. If you send me a question, you take a guess. The answer is yes. I hope everyone stay happy, safe, and blessed. Never stop singing or spewing the, one, the wonderful words inside your chest. Now stop feeling, being, and thinking your best. All right. Thank you, Eddie. Eddie's, Eddie's attitude is a real inspiration. That is something that I can tell you without any hesitation. There you go. See, we all have something to learn from each other. <laughs>
There you go. Uh, well, we're we're going to uh, go go to an old standby now. Uh, the only other you heard Richie mention that I, that I've been here for all of these. There's only one other performer who can claim that, and that is uh, your friend and mine, Dan the Man. We're calling for the right hand hander out of the bullpen. Dan, are you ready? Dan. Okay. Dan's not ready. Okay. Uh, Richie, did you still want to? Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Okay. You ready? Sorry, I just came from the restroom. I apologize. Okay. No worries. No worries. We understand. Okay. Your, your spotlight's on. Take the mic when you're ready. All right. Uh, first, uh, I'm gonna quick. Uh, I'm gonna quickly. Um, you know what? I'm gonna do a real quick. Uh, uh, I'm gonna do a real quick freestyling, and a real quick. Uh, and a real quick of this. And um, yep. Okay. Let me start with a little bit of uh, freestyling poetry. Uh, that's a, <laughs> All right. Hmm. You know, Kit, I need to invite you to this to this nutritional club called Get Fit. Hmm. Yeah, and something a bit with the knit. Yep, and it's always the adequate and always close knit. Hmm. You don't need no babysit. Damn the counterfeit. There's always there's always a nutritional shake called banana split. <laughs> Come. Yeah, so that we giggly split. Hmm. Yeah, so therefore, I'd like to invite you to get fit. The nutritional club called Get Fit. Uh, it's Get Fit Nutrition. <laughs> yep, so, so hope you don't skip, hope you don't uh, skip this skit, if you know what I mean. Wit, <laughs> if a bit. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, this is it. <laughs> Yeah, so, <laughs> okay, now, there's the part where I left off, okay, all right, uh, uh, the words of love, piropos, romantic sands from Mexico, since we are about a couple of weeks away till Valentine's Day, this is the count, this is going to be the countdown, look, I'm almost halfway through this book, so let's see if I can finish this on, by the end of Valentine's Day, well, I'll have to wait, so. All right. <clears throat> Mujer, be fuertes tanto que haces percer a un santo. Woman, your charms can main, make a saint sin. Ojos que no ve, corazón que no siente. siente. What the eyes don't see, the heart won't feel. Tortillas. La tortilla y la mujer se han de comer en caliente. Tortillas and women are the best when hot. La vergüenza y la dorsenyes uh, solo se pierden una vez. Shame and virginity are lost only once. Hmm. Uh, enfermedad de nueve meses antes de diez desaparece. Des, I'm sorry, desaparece. The nine month sickness disappears by the tenth. Uh, I guess I know what that is. <laughs> la, la que a todos parece hermosa. Es para su marido peligrosa. The, the prettier the wife, the more the husband strife. Okay. Tú eres mi catedral. Las demás, I'm sorry, las demás son capillitas. 
capillitas. Okay. You are my cathedral. The rest are little chapels. Okay. Okay. Okay, there's four more. De hombre carnicero y ruin. De mujer que hable latin y de caballo sin renda. Dios nos cuide y nos defienda. God keep and defend us from violent evil men, women who speak Latin, and horses without reins. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do one more. And cava y en armores entras cuando quieres y sales cuando puedes. Wine cellars are love. You enter when you want to, you want and exit when you can. Okay. All right, I'm gonna stop right there. I'll continue next Monday. Here is Words of Love, Piropos, Romantic Sands by Mexico, from Mexico. Right there. Okay. Thanks very much. <laughs> All right, you're sounding like Charlie Brown's teacher right now. There we go. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, be aware of my regular blogs. I think later this week we'll keep you posted. Okay. okay. Comes the card. Sorry, I jumped over. Oh, no, no. Hold on. Uh oh. Uh, really? Uh, Richie. All right, kid. All right. There you go. What the hell is going on there? Uh, share screen wasn't turned on. And Dan was banging it like an old TV. Uh, but we got it turned on now. So here you go. Thank you. All right. Miss, uh, give me a miss. Uh, okay. okay, here it is. We didn't weep it. I'm behind post on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, I'm definitely not so sure what's going on with Twitter. Let's, uh, but I'm catching up on Instagram. But most importantly, follow uh, Find Dan the Vance Weekly on YouTube. Uh, just uh, just search the title and uh, watch it. Don't forget to subscribe my channel. Don't forget, hashtag Dan the Vance Weekly. <laughs> uh, social media page, like maybe TikTok or maybe... Snapchat or 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 I don't know. I'm I'm thinking of creating a Patreon, but uh, I'm gonna gonna need some help from. Uh... Keep in mind, I'm still I'm still planning to write a book, but. It will be it will be latest from my writings for my past few years of my poetry I I did, so let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. Okay, guys, guys, thank you so much. I hope to see you next Monday. All right. Okay, back to you, Kit. And uh, if we do have more, uh, bring them out. If not, so. <laughs> All right, I'll tell them. <laughs> well, it is a. Uh... Well, Dan, I believe Dan uh, 
Dan is calling to mind uh, the words of Bertrand Russell, who once said that uh, everything is uh, vague to a degree that you do not realize until you. Okay. Well, thank you. Not me, Bertrand Russell. Uh, but uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to real quick plug the things that I, the ongoing concerns that I have. Uh, if you're looking for more of me, you can find me at Instagram at Kit Ren Away, Twitter at Kit Talk Sports, uh, Kofi.com slash Kit Ren is where, uh, where some of my sports writing resides. You can find me on Facebook easy enough. Send me an email if you want to get in touch with me about anything. And the other ongoing concern that I have is, of course, the Tumblewords project, where, uh, where you will see some people uh, that you've already uh, seen tonight in a uh, journal writing workshop environment. Um, this week, we're going to have uh, the uh, brother of uh, Bill Sparks on. He's a librettist, and he's going to talk to us about how writing changes the writer. Um, Plenty of BWAMs All-Stars will be hosting workshops in the next few months, including, as you heard, Brian, including Finn Bell, including uh, the absent Lee Martinez Soto, including me. Uh, and uh, so every Saturday, one o'clock, uh, this is where we run, we run this. And uh, anybody else might want to think of that's doing it soon. And Michael Sindler too. Thank you. I need I need a title from you soon. Not not right now, but soon. And <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm gonna turn it back over to Richie for a little bit. See what he has to say. Uh, yeah, I just talk about anything really. Um, I did see. Uh, yeah, um, I wanted to give a shout out to everyone who was watching on YouTube. Uh, quite the lovely crowd today. In addition to Sandy, we had a B as well tuning in. Luisa, we had Jeff from the Garage Poets. <clears throat> Love you guys. We're all kind of roasting Dan a little bit at the end. Not roasting, but uh, Dan was doing some like high tech stuff without the tech, you know, with his voc like vocal <clears throat> changes. But um, yeah, as Luisa mentioned, uh, Dan needs to be introduced to a vocoder. Uh, very cool stuff. Uh, Bean a log, Dan. Go hit up a, a meeting. And then you'll go, go hit up like all the new uh, vocal technology. Speaking of which, I like to incorporate a beatbox <clears throat> when I perform. I'm still trying to figure out what to call that. Kind of like vocal looper bebop prosody or something. I don't know. I'm going to figure that out. <clears throat> still trying to work it out. But I did have a new video just drop. I, mentioned, I meant to mention it earlier, but uh, my buddy, uh, Victor, who runs Visual High Stereo, they uh you know they create they're they're producers they do a lot of music videos and so we did a poetry session i think pretty sure the first of his in his channel <clears throat> but i did link it i believe on uh on uh the youtube live chat okay now i just did and i linked it here on zoom as well so i encourage you guys to check it out give it a listen i did a <clears throat> a one take set so I did three poems all in one take. I, I took the audio from that, and then we filmed kind of like a, a music video for it. Um, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool aesthetic. Uh, <clears throat> old school VHS kind of glitchy. It's crazy how, how people reproduce that. But um, I'm going to share a piece or two. And uh, while I look for a piece, I don't know if uh, I'll let Julian know if he wants to. Just write in the chat if you want to read or not. But uh, here we go. This one's called... Let poetry be poetry. Let poetry be poetry. I explain to a room full of students unaware of their own potential. It's a torrential discourse on the source and divorce of common sense from education. The course which pours through seams of dreams left in shambles, the children left in rambles who've become adults. Let's call them left behind. <clears throat> Come on in if you're willing to listen. We won't have to tell the world that the moon is shining when I can guide you with the glint of light on broken glass. In the lunchroom, people come and go, speaking of who you have to know. My heart 
blossomed in enthusiasm the instant I overheard the word galaxy uttered the next table over during my office hours in the ca- in the ca- in the school cafeteria. They were just talking about the phone. I talk about phones too, but right now I wanted to talk about the galaxy. <clears throat> Clumsy guitar chords are strummed in a chord in the air and transformed into magical Louis Bonfa melodies in the hazy red eye underbelly of my distant reality, just in time to see the futility and eternity. Whatever happened to a time when knowledge was power and books were passports to the uncharted territories of passion and the imagination? To send the sensation of unsent incendiary letters into the better but unbent deflector sector of not so silent specters. Because this is the kind of stuff that haunts you. When people tend to look a lot more like shadows than they do people, it's feeble. Just shut up and write, I whisper to myself. As the golden cosmos, perennials, planted along campus, shake off the dew of a a recent rain, a desert blessing. The wind howls along to the rhythm, echoing in my mind, right, 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 edit, right, edit, 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 delete, repeat, delete, repeat, repeat. Let poetry be poetry. I explained to a room full of students. Okay, um, still kind of working on that one. Um, and every time I read it a lot, I, I recognize that. Um, last one. Let's see what do I want to end with. I haven't done this one in a while. <clears throat> I remember rooms strewn with strangers, adorned with the weight of wandering eyes, yearning for that chance to linger to feast on that quiet desperation, to catch another's fish hook, high wire, kerosene soaked life preserver of a glance. For just a chance, for just a moment, a moment, this moment in which we are the only two people in existence, burning hot quasars on the peripheries of something. Caught in a dance with nothing, it's a cosmic tango, nebula, dust pillars swirling into the medley of cascading trumpet battle cries. It's the ever-expanding pull of the universe to know itself. We are a feather and a bowling ball falling side by side in the vacuum of maybe, perhaps, not today. Count us the everyday explorers of the could-have-beens and sidewinded sing-alongs. We bring along the song of the long gone and since then rescinded, call us heavy-winded. Eternity. Living, breathing, dying, and being reborn all over again. Eternity lived out in moments like this one. Ojitos. Ocular arsonry in which our eyes meet like head-on high beams on the seclusion of a pre-dawn southwest desert highway doomed for a head-on collision of you and me. The taste of a cotton candy sunrise and the sizzle of a new day. <clears throat> and fin, finito. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to be trying to work on some new stuff. Um, If you guys are watching this, we got a lot of live events this week. You can follow us at the Barbed Wire Open Mic Series. Much, much love and gratitude as always to Kit Ren for stepping in to help host. You know, it it is a busy week, so this really does help take a lot of the stress off. Catch us Tuesday at Capri, our poetry night, spoken word poetry night. Come with your original poems, come with old poems, come with poems you want to dust off, come with cover poems. It's, you know, we're going to be setting up around 7, sign up in social hour 7 p.m. And of course, readings from 8 to 10 p.m. And if this is a, a nice turnout, maybe this will be a monthly thing. <clears throat> if it's a really good turnout, uh, you know, maybe we can also do other things like slams every now and then. But for now, this is just going to be a gathering where people can read and not be bothered by some of the other things that got in the way of open mics in the past. <clears throat> With that said, we do have a regular open a regular open mic Thursday at Old Sheepdog. And uh, yeah, be on the lookout for more. <clears throat> Thanks again, everyone who checked out YouTube, Lisa, B, 
Sandy. I, I'm sure I actually missed a couple of people. Uh, and we will see you next Monday. Be on the lookout for the sign-up sheet. Again, you can follow us um, on social media to be kept up with the code. All right, guys, <clears throat> for the live stream, my name is Rich. Shout out to everyone who performed. Love you guys. Have a good night. See you next week. Peace. Boom.